Hi all, welcome to another edition of Legality Customer Stories. Uh, I'm extremely grateful to be joined today by Dhairya Shah, who is in the Project Management Office and BPRG team at Axis Finance. Adhairya, thanks so much for joining. Hope all is well at your end. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Aditya, for checking this out, and uh, thanks for having me for this conversation. It's a great uh, pleasure for me to kind of have uh, this discussion with you today. Uh, just a brief introduction about myself. Yes, uh, as you mentioned, uh, I uh, manage the project piece, uh, which involves all, all the IT automations that we do here. And there are a lot of business process automations. So one of the objective of uh, chatting with you today is uh, trying to cover the business process, process automation part, uh, which we have implemented through you. So thanks for having me for this. The pleasure is ours, uh, area. So, so I want to start actually with an introduction to Axis Finance because I think to most listeners out there, Axis Bank is what they commonly know in the Axis Group for. Axis Finance is a relatively uh, new entry into the group. Right. So, right. I just want to you know explore a bit about Axis Finance. So, can sure. you you know briefly tell me what Axis Finance is all about? Correct, correct. So uh, yes, as you mentioned, Access Brand is uh, well known in the market, uh, which is to do with the Access Bank. Access Bank uh, has a lot of subsidiaries, uh, which includes AMCs. Uh, it includes one of uh, the NBFC that we have. So we are 100% uh, uh, subsidiary of Access Bank uh, into the NBFC lending arm. And uh, our uh, focus area remains to be uh, retail, mid-market, as well as corporate segments. So uh, we call ourselves as a universal NBFC, uh, which caters to multiple uh, customer segments across the board. And uh, we kind of compete with uh, a lot of NBFCs as well as uh, some of the large players in the uh, competition. But as we say, from a right. parenthood perspective, we are 100% subsidiary of Access Bank. Right. So, so I'm glad you brought that up towards the end of uh, what you just said, uh, that you know, you're in a highly competitive space. There are, uh, it seems like everywhere you look these days, there's an NBFC. So. How exactly does Access Finance differentiate itself from the rest of the pack? Yeah. So uh, as far as differentiation is concerned, I, uh, in fact, we strongly believe that the opportunity in the market is that huge uh, that we don't have to worry about who is our competition because uh, it all depends on what kind of processes that we have, what kind of customer service that we give, and what is our reach. Uh, if I think these three components are there in place, then uh, then we don't have to worry about competition. There is enough of business in the market available. And hence, uh, we don't even worry about competing with Access Bank if required. Uh, but I think uh, from that perspective, while we call ourselves as a new entrant to this space, we started retail only one and a half year back. Uh, but we are kind of uh, at a pace at which uh, most of the NBFCs uh, we would want to uh, you know uh, stay ahead with in terms of the automations and the kind of uh, project that we have uh, taken up here. So I'll take you through uh, some of these uh, during today's call, uh, but that is broadly that we look at uh, in, in terms of the market space which is available. Right, right. So I, I remember in a previous conversation, you had mentioned to me that uh, Access Finance from inception was started with the idea of being tech-led or digital transformation-led. Uh, could you briefly, you know, let us know why this decision was taken? Um, yeah, so, uh, in today's world, right, uh, where uh, with especially during the times where uh, the COVID is there, the pandemic is all around the place, it becomes all the more uh, pertinent and critical uh, that uh, digitization takes over the normal physical process. And uh, that's what we did, right? So uh, our focus continued to be having strong pillars as far as the systems, processes, and people are concerned. Uh, and hence, we believe that uh, automation plays a very, very crucial role, uh, especially in the initial phase, right? Because once you grow your system, once you grow your people, once you grow your market, and then switching over to automations take a lot more effort, a lot more training, a lot more uh, you know, uh, deeper analysis, uh, if if I may say, but uh, we being a startup, we have an added advantage uh, that the slate is clean and uh, we can uh, kind of draw processes and uh, right, you know, have the systems in such a way that from the beginning stage itself, uh, we have those capabilities that when you want to scale up to a higher numbers, it's much, much easier for us. So hence uh, for us, digitization and automation 
remains a very critical uh, you know aspect of our business growth and uh, that is the reason we, we have focused uh, if you I, I can say extra focus on the automation and the digital part uh, right 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 thanks thanks daria so i know we meant touched this touched upon this at the beginning uh, that you're in the project management office and bprgt but what exactly does that team do and what exactly is your role yeah so as part of uh, the team what we do is we take care of all the it projects and digital initiatives a uh, lot of process automations on the it side on the credit side on the operation side on the sales side so every function uh, we try and do a lot of process automations there are a lot of product improvements so in terms of customizing the uh, you know basic products so we have a base product which is your home loan lab personal loan business loan. but how can you offer a customized solution to the uh, you know to the customers to the partners is something that we work on the pro product improvements and uh, the critical role is we understand the business and the customer requirements very well and we kind of translate that into a viable solution for both for internal and external customers so that remains our uh, role with an active plan. right right thanks daria so so let me come now to the paper challenge uh, you know what the problems you were facing with paper in your both loan journeys and your dsa journeys so uh, can you you know briefly describe to me what documents uh, did access finance need to get signed and more importantly why was it important for access finance that it you know that these documents get signed because and i'll tell you where this question is coming from is that a lot of people would say why don't you just go digital have a yes no tick box i mean and be done with it so so you know can you just elaborate on access finances log, uh, like you know right yeah right right so aditya yes as you know in fact a lot of us would have also taken loans in our uh, life and we would have gone through a similar experience but if you see a typical journey right uh, there are a lot of documents which the customer needs to sign right and those uh, documents could vary from something which is required by the regulator or uh, which is to do with the internal processes so it is like getting customer consent for the terms and conditions or doing a bureau check right and also then there are application form he has to sign he has to sign NASH forms there are various affidavits loan agreements uh, you know insurance papers similarly on the vendor side if you look at they have to sign ndas there are agreements they have to sign uh, then there are pos which are issued the payment invoices are being done so there are a lot of uh, you know paper pro led process which are there uh, that is the reason it is important that uh, you know we relook at this process and see how we can kind of uh, do away with a lot of uh, you know manual and the physical leg which is involved in the whole process Okay, so when you mention vendors, you mean the whole gamut from tech software platforms that you use to even your DSAs, basically Correct. anyone you contract with for this, not just your customers, right? Correct. Correct. So it begins with uh, the core vendor, which is the DSA. But yes, uh, it covers across the credit vendors, including legal, technical, uh, you know, CPB vendors, uh, PD vendors. And even on the, uh, let's say on the IT side, there are a lot of vendors that we have. So we kind of... Uh, want to get this full process into end uh, in terms of the uh, onboarding processing of invoices and also payments in a digital form right 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 so coming to documents what was the old process for uh, getting you know the documents you described uh, in your previous answer what was the old process to get them signed uh, in the physical form sure so the old process was to get the physical signs on every document which i was just mentioning so there are printouts which are being taken, you know, they're physically being written by the sales team and then uh, you get signatures, right? And then we have to store all these physical copies uh, in, a, a, let's say, a docket and then archive it and do a lot of process around uh, storing those documents after the physical, uh, you know, document is signed by the customer. So this process is what uh, we used to follow. In fact, when we started uh, on, a, let's say, a home loan uh, product, everything was physical so right from the application form to the uh, signing of the loan agreement to the nash form so everything was uh, a paper based process uh, when we started with right and what were the main problems challenges issues you faced with this paper based process yeah so i i think this is pretty straightforward right so when you have paper which is getting involved in any process you have to do a lot of inventory management you have to manage the logistics Right. Sometimes uh, the customer is not physically available, so you have to take an appointment. 
right? Uh, if the vendor has to be contacted, you have to physically go get the you know invoices signed if required. It takes a lot of uh, you know turnaround time to get the process completed. Uh, the productivity on an overall basis gets impacted, right? Uh, now, since there are physical documents which get involved, there are chances of damages which can happen, right? Then there is a cost on storing every such physical document, right? So it can be you know putting an into an envelope. Uh, then uh, getting the you know the agency to come and pick up the document and then archive it. Then for every year we have to keep paying the same cost for the documents which are being stored, right? And then specifically like if there is a pandemic and other things, it is practically difficult to physically uh, get everything done, right? And right. Uh, that then uh, these are the challenges which not only us but anybody would face who is getting into a paper based process. Right. Uh... So, can you give, give you know give us a particular example or illustration or anecdote of a specific incident that actually highlights this paper challenge you mentioned above? Okay. Uh, so now let's take a typical example of a loan agreement process, right? Uh, you know, once the application is approved, uh, in a typical process, a sales officer will take a you know printout of that, or he will take a physical booklet, right? He will fill up almost like sixty fields into that agreement, right? It takes close to 30 minutes for him to fill that. Uh, it is also subject to manual correction because he might do some mistake while filling it, which again then requires a counter signature. He then has to actually carry that uh, loan agreement visit to the DSA place if it is a DSA source application, submit everything there, right? Then the DSA person will either, you know, go to the customer the same day or he may go to the next day. He will take the customer's appointment. Customer need to then spend again 20 to 30 minutes in signing all the documents one by one right and it's it's a cumbersome process to put so many signatures right once it is signed by the customer again uh, it has to flow the reverse way right so the customer uh, gets to the dsa then dsa gives it to uh, our officer and then our officer will bring it back to the operations so that is how uh, the you know the full process works right and overall it takes if you ask me close to 3 to 5 days to get the loan agreement executed. We are just talking about one document here, which is loan agreement. And typically it takes three to five days to get it uh, you know, executed into it. Thanks, Zaria. That was a very elaborate description and really highlights the pain. Three to five days is very uh, like, I mean, can't imagine that it takes so long. Uh, from the customer's end, we often, you know, it takes us a day of, you know, meeting the DSA and signing things, but in the back end taking three to five days is not something on the customer side that you know we imagine is going on behind the scenes. Uh, so uh, next I want to actually come to the solutions you explored because obviously when you face this problem, uh, so what were the different kinds of solutions you explored to solve this uh, paper challenge uh, with your documents? Correct. No, so uh, this is, is a big problem statement if you ask me, right? So when you say three to five days, just imagine the kind of uh, effort which gets into every single transaction, which we had to kill it, right? So internally, we kind of brainstormed on what can be the process optimization that we can do. One is to reduce the number of visits, and second is to reduce the filling up process of the loan agreement manually, right? Right. So work with our you know core uh, uh, you know system LOS system to get a pre-filled loan agreement from the system, which we did. So we have a you know process in place where uh, from the system there can be a pre-filled uh, loan agreement which is generated, which will have all the details. So it will have the customer name, the loan details, his address, his PAN details, right? Uh, what rate he is taking, what are the TNCs, schedule of charges, everything, right? But in spite of doing this, it is not solving the problem end to end, which we wanted to do, right? So still it takes three to five days that is not getting reduced you are reducing the chances of an error you are reducing maybe let's say maximum half an hour to fill the agreement but our overall tat is still not getting improved uh, so basically uh, to address this problem we kind of evaluated what else can be done right because there is a stamping also involved uh, where uh, you know we have to procure the stamp or there has to be a stamping vendor uh, which needs to be in place so we kind of explore that can we have a localized or a centralized maybe. Uh, so what are the options that we can work out on a stamping? How will the whole process work? Will our central team will coordinate with one vendor? Will our local team will have to coordinate with the other you know, local vendors get the stamping done? 
So we kind of explored uh, many such solutions uh, to see that how best we can address this. Right. So and why did you, you know, end up choosing legality uh, in the end out of, you know, the solutions that you explored? Yes. So which is the good news, right? And that is the reason we are talking here that uh, we have this, uh, you know, success uh, working with legality uh, to try and address this uh, problem end to end. And this is only one of the problem, right? Uh, there are other problem statements also that we have addressed through legality. And uh, how did we end up uh, tying up with legality? I think we had a very uh, great uh, exploration in terms of the use case uh, and the solution, right? So our use case was explained thoroughly end to end. Uh, and then every problem statement which was coming out of that use case was getting addressed through legality, right? So any complex problem that we talked about in terms of filling the agreement, in terms of visiting, in terms of stamping, and the internal processes, external processes, everything was getting addressed through legality, right? So right from setting up the uh, workflows, right, for the template-based agreement that we have. So for all the products, including personal loan, business loan, now we are working on even the home loan to have a very standardized template. So that's something workflow uh, we have in legality platform, right? The customer signing process is so simple. He can do it over his mobile, over his laptop, any device that he has. He just gets an alert in form of, in form of an SMS or email. He clicks there. He is able to view the complete loan agreement which is pre-filled for him. So there is no debate later on. There are no customer complaints later on that uh, he has signed a blank agreement, right? Because that practice still continues to be uh, with many players that, uh, you know, they get the customer sign the loan agreement. Customer does not know what he's signing. And then eventually he feels uh, cheated. So all this is out of the way, right? Again, as I mentioned, the stamping process, uh, typically you would have to coordinate with the stamping vendors. Uh, you would have to ensure that the inventory is available at all time, what denominations that you want to procure, and that require a lot of effort at our end. Now, even that got addressed, right? Through the e-stamping process, where legality has tie up with local stamping vendors across states, right? So all the major states that we operate, legality has tie up with them and it actually gave us a huge advantage right it completely eliminated the full process of agreement as well as stamping including the expense management the logistic issues and this this if you ask me is a game changer right because look at the customer experience he is just doing this at his ease there is no dsa calling him there is no sales manager calling him there is no visit happening at his office. There's nobody coming at his home. Just sitting on his sofa, he is signing the agreement, right? It's so simple. Uh, it is so seamless. He just enters his other number, gets the OTP, enters the ODP, and he's done. I think that is the reason uh, you have all the problems addressed with legality, and that made us go with the solution. Right, right. And uh you know, uh, deciding to go with legality is one thing and actually completing the onboarding is, of course, another whole exercise. So how was the onboarding process with legality? Uh, was it hard? Was it easy? Right, right, right. Now, so see, success of any digital innovation can be measured in one simple way. You know, how well a non-IT person connect with the system and work seamlessly, right? That is the proof of the pudding. We feel that legality platform scores full marks in this. Currently, it is managed by our operations department with minimal support from our core IT team. So there is no IT support. It's the operations team themselves doing it. Uh, setting of the workflow, defining various parameters has been very, very simple. Right? We didn't face any major glitches even during our testing times and even after go live. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, this something I think the support has been fabulous from legality side as well whatever minor changes that we had to do over a period of time were so promptly done uh, that even our operations team is so happy working with legality. Thanks, Daria. Uh, I think it means a lot definitely to our operations team uh, when they hear things like that and keeps them motivated. Uh, so thanks for that feedback. Uh, I just want to understand, you know, before any, uh, like, before onboarding with legality, did you have any apprehensions in your like head? Uh, did your team have any apprehensions? In fact, nothing. Once uh, we sat across, uh, look at the solution, look at how the product offering is, 
uh, there was no apprehension left behind, right? And we were confident that uh, the mix at the legality team, which it has, you know, the mix of IT and the legal understanding which the organization carries, I think it's pretty much simple. So no issues, no apprehensions. I think it was a straightforward one. Right. So now I want to come to the actual uh, usage of legality. So Access had the problem and you described your whole old process. Uh, then you told us about, you know, the onboarding process with legality. Now I want to understand, you know, after the onboarding happened, how exactly does Access use legality? So what is your new after legality process for executing the documents? Right. Right. So uh, at present, we are using legality platform for executing loan agreements for our two core products, both on the unsecured side, which is business loan as well as personal loan. Right. And now through this process, our TAT on disbursement has reduced almost 60% right, with a fully paperless journey. And uh, just to quote some numbers today, 90% of our agreements are being executed to legality platform only in personal loan business and close to 80% in business loan vertical. Now, nobody could imagine that even in a business loan when there is a self-employed involved, there can be an e-agreement process which can work. And uh, let me uh, share you this, that it is working so seamlessly that be it a salaried, be it a self-employed, uh, or be it a professional, everybody is so comfortable using this platform that we are able to see such high number of conversions which are happening. We are also using uh, legality for our vendor payouts, right? Which as I was mentioning that even our invoices are digitally signed. You know, this has benefited us a lot in improving the TAT and in turn also increase team productivity because even the DSAs are relieved by not, you know, taking the letter heads and printing invoices, sending to us, and then uh, we looking at it, either approving or rejecting, and then uh, giving it to our finance team pro for processing. So everything is taken care. And uh, just to quote another number, it has been now six months. 100% of our DSA payments are made only through invoice through the legality platform. We have completely done away with any physical invoices for our DSAs. Everything is through invoice on the legality platform. Thanks, Daria. Thanks so much for sharing those numbers with us. Uh, so what would you say at the risk of repetition, what would you say, you know, are the key benefits you uh, receive from this legality process? Yeah, I think uh, there are. So actually, of... just before that, I think something we missed on is uh, so does in the legality process, is it an assisted journey or is it a purely online journey or is it a mix of both? Like what's the actual process? Do they log into an access app, access website or uh, does the agent still go with a iPad or uh, something like that or is it both? Yeah, no, so uh, I think uh, it's pretty simple. So there is no requirement of any application. Uh, there is no separate logins required. Uh, the way we manage is uh, it is triggered centrally, right? So whatever applications that needs to be triggered agreement, uh, it comes as a request to the central team and central team is triggering those from the platform directly, uh, which is a legality platform. So there is no third party dependency. In fact, we are in advanced stage of having it built as part of our API integration. Uh, which is almost uh, nearing completion. So uh, this is completely seamless. No pads, no devices, nothing. Uh, it is being triggered into and through a system process and customer gets an SMS. That is that is enough. Uh, even customer doesn't need to have any uh, URL or any app downloaded for him to execute this. So I think it's pretty simple and straightforward for anybody to uh, get this through. Right. So one specific feature actually I wanted to, uh, you know, focus on uh, now is the excel upload feature access finance is one of the clients who uses the excel uh, feature a lot actually sorry before that we were on the key benefits uh, yeah. so, yeah, what so would... in fact the key benefits uh, there are many right so some of them is very evident that there is no physical documents at all right the complete process is paperless not a single printout is taken in the whole journey there is no issue of logistics. You don't have a employee, a DSA, a customer to manage appointments and trying to meet each other physically, right? The application journeys have become so shorter. You can do it uh, within quick span of time. Customer satisfaction has improved a lot, right? Because uh, once he signs the agreement in within next 15 seconds, the document is available in his mailbox, which is signed by him and the AFL. 
right? There is an improved overall process in terms of the turnaround time. The process is fully secure and safe, right? So uh, the complete audit trail of the transaction is available. Where is the party signing from? What is his IP location, etc., is available. And overall, yes, it improves the sales team performance. And uh, you know they can be more productive. They can do more business uh, with less effort. Right. And now, yes, I want to come to Excel Upload because Access Finance is one of uh, you know Legality's top users of this feature. Uh, can you elaborate on how uh, the Excel upload feature is adding value to Access Finance's documentation processes? Sure. So, uh, in legality, uh, in C basically the Excel upload features gives us the option to scale up the operations via initiating workflow for multiple customers simultaneously. Right. So, we don't have to trigger that one by one for each customer. Uh, it is uh, that you know we process it every half an hour. So every half an hour, whatever is the request which are there, one shot will trigger uh, to all those customers. Uh, that is the reason uh, you know this upload feature helps a lot. Uh, you don't have to put the effort of triggering it multiple times. It reduces the dependency uh, you know to trigger workflow multiple times a day. Right, the same resources can you know do multitasking. Uh, he can actually manage uh, multiple things at one go. He doesn't have to do this activity the whole day, right? And uh, what we see is the customer also satisfied because uh, there's no longer waiting times available through the Excel upload features. The so things move very, very swiftly and the process gets over in a jiffy. So I think Excel uploads matters a lot. As I mentioned, uh, we will also have the API integrations uh, very soon. Uh, through which even the local operations team right, will be able to do it. So we will go with both the processes. Uh, as of now, we have centralized process, but we will have very soon both centralized as well as decentralized pro uh, processes ready. And uh, between businesses, uh, we will be able to have the flexibility of triggering the way we want to do. Right, right, right. Thanks for that area. So uh, I want to now come to you know day-to-day -day usage and the nitty gritties of and issues that come up you know during usage of a platform uh, so how would you describe your experience with legality support and implementation team uh, was it hard to you know even after onboarding was it hard to set up and go live with legality no i think i think it's pretty uh, simple right so the overall interaction uh, with legality support as well as implementation teams is always smooth and satisfying uh, touch wood because there's nothing which has gone uh, wrong so far uh, the team has always taken up the responsibilities and supported to ensure that the urgent requirements are uh, met at uh, a reasonable time period. Right? There is no obstacles that we have faced so far. Uh, overall, that has been uh, you know, very encouraging uh, to work with uh, legality in terms of any modifications or new workflows that we uh, want to uh, uh, create. I think overall it has been very satisfying. Th thanks, Theria. Uh, and I noticed Access Finance has started using a lot of features after going live, which during the evaluation stage, you know, those features were not in your horizon. And after going live, I think some features we added and also some features you evaluated after going live. Uh, was it hard to incorporate these features later than after, you know, you had already gamed the initial process? Uh, was sure. it hard to incorporate these features and integrate these features into your workflow? Sure. Sure. No, in fact, uh, let me give an example, a simple change of, uh, you know, having a mail ID, which is a generic mail ID, or let's say having a template, which is more customized to access finance. I think some of these changes uh, we have done that quickly uh, that we haven't, uh, you know, find any issues. And yes, after going live also, some of the features on the flexibility, which is available in the tool and the workflow has been very simple for us to understand and adopt. I want to come to one of the usage features or you know the admin feature so to speak uh, not related to the signing journey strictly which is the automated MIS reports feature uh, can you briefly elaborate on how this feature adds value to your document operations because it doesn't directly pertain to the customer journey yeah no it is good to see so when you come to office every day uh, morning 9 30 you will see a you know automated email coming in your mailbox from the legality uh, platform, which will tell you that how much of conversion has happened a day before, right? So it keeps us uh, up to date in terms of what is the overall usage and what are the you know consumptions that we are doing across the various templates that we have configured. 
it actually helps both the management as well as the operation teams to measure the success and monitor the transactions, right? Because uh, when I quote you some number that we are 80%, 90% there, uh, it is only because of these MISs that we are being able to drive this early, right? And these automation uh, definitely helps. I think uh, the more we get into it, the more beneficial we are finding it. And we are now actually making a lot of cuts out of this MIS to see how we can further get into other processes that we are evaluating right now for uh, for the digital uh, signing. Right, right, right. And I'm just curious to know, you know, have you received any feedback from your team uh, about legality? And if so, um, if you can share some of that with us. In fact, a lot of feedback. So we got a lot of feedback and this is across functions, right? So uh, it has been a game changer if you ask me for our front end sales team. Right, we have got so many appreciations and acknowledgements from the team on how seamless the life has become uh, for them. Right, specifically on pandemic, specifically on lockdowns, they are not able to meet the physical, uh, the customer physically. Right, this becomes so much helpful for them. Uh, in fact, they are able to manage their work life balance a little better. Right, because their travel time has reduced a lot. And uh, with this e agreement as well as the e stamping process, there. Uh, you know, work on getting the stamping procured, managing with the vendor, everything is fully done away with, right? So there is a lot of uh, positive feedback, a lot of appreciations from our team, especially on the front end sales, uh, whose life has completely changed after this. Right. Th thanks so much for that, Dharia.